Hey, have you ever wondered what is the fruit of the spirit of faithfulness? I mean, we know what love and joy and peace and patience are and how important they are, but why the fruit of the spirit of faithfulness? Have you ever wondered what it does? Like, what does that do for us, to us, to others? You know, because the fruit of the spirit is not only for us, but for others. Or have you ever wondered why it's important? Why is the fruit of the spirit of faithfulness in that list? If you've had any of those questions, or if you just want to know more about the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and how he works in us, and the fruit of that spirit, then I hope you'll join me today. I am Andy Lee, and I am here to help you live abundantly. And we do that, my friends, through the Word of God, through digging into the Word, not just reading it, even though reading it's really good. It's that deep dive study that really brings it to life and changes us. And this whole year, I've been working on a series on the fruit of the Spirit. And this month, we are focused on faithfulness and what that is. Um, you know, I studying this, I decided that this might be one of the most important fruit of the Spirit. I know it's not the first one. Love comes first. Love, joy, and peace. And I'm not sure if Paul, who wrote this in Galatians 5.25, actually put them in order or not. Somehow faithfulness gets lost between love, which is really important, and the last one, self-control, which is the hardest one, right? Can't wait to talk about that one. But, um, but faithfulness kind of gets lost with all those, but it's so important. And today we, we can look at, we'll talk about, you know, how we just read that in our definition of faithfulness, but then we're going to study that ancient word because that's going to show us something I think that will prove my point that this fruit of the Spirit could be the most important fruit of all. All right, it's vital. So let's study the ancient word. So let me just go through Galatians 5.25 just to remind us what it is. Um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control above these things, there is no law. So there are no rules on these. These are really good things to have. There doesn't need to be any rules or instructions about using these things, right? So the ancient word that's been translated in most of our translations in our Bible as faithfulness is a Greek word because it's New Testament, so it was it was Greek, and it's P I S T I S, pistis. Now pistis is an interesting Greek word. I love it. So it does mean faith, it does mean belief, and it also means trust, and it can mean fidelity. Or faithfulness. It's a noun. I, I found something really interesting that in Greek mythology, Pistis was the personification of good faith, trust, and reliability. Isn't that interesting? Keep in mind that the original hearers of this letter, the original ones that it was intended to be read to, that Paul wrote it for, they, they were in that Greek world. And so they would be really familiar with Pistis, with this personification of good faith, trust, and reliability. I mean, they were Christians, and so they didn't live, you know, that Greek mythology life, but I'm sure they were aware of it. So when they heard that word, 
The fruit of the Spirit is pistis. They would know it's this good faith, this trust, this reliability. Also, this word in ancient times re referred to a guarantee, which I thought was really interesting too. The pistis is this guarantee. So that's where we can get the word, um, the reliability or fidelity or faithfulness. But first and foremost, the word means trust and it means faith. It means belief. John 3.16 uses the verb form of this word. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should bestow, which is the verb form of physis, bestow in him should have everlasting life, right? Should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, that word, remember, is trust. In the King James Version of Galatians 5, 25, King James translates pistis as faith. So, for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faith. I think it got mixed up. In self-control. So, faith. How important is it to have the fruit of the Spirit of faith? Well, I just read you John 3.16. It's everything, right? This is the basis. This is the foundation of our relationship with Jesus is our trust in him. This pistis, this pistis, this belief, this fidelity, this trusting of him. It's so powerful. Now, even though this was written in the Greek, and they, many of the people reading this, I'm sure, read Greek, but a lot of them were Jewish. In fact, probably most of them were Jewish, which blows some of our minds. But yes, the first Christians were Jewish believers who believed in Yeshua. And so they were reading this too. And many of them spoke Hebrew. Many of them, you know, they, they knew the Old Testament. That, that was their Bible. Still is the Bible for the Jewish people today is our Old Testament. So I always want to connect the, the Old Testament to the New and the New back to the Old. So I want us to look at an, a Hebrew word, a Hebrew scripture about faith, about faithfulness. And I want you to look with me at Deuteronomy 7, 9, because I want us to get this Hebrew word. So Deuteronomy 7, 9, if you want to, if you got your Bibles and you want to turn with me and look at that. This is just a sweet, sweet, sweet scripture. I love it. Deuteronomy 7, 9, just a promise from God. Know therefore that the Lord, which is in, camp, in all caps, Yahweh, your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. The faithful God, that word and faithful, that ancient Hebrew word, because this is Old Testament, is Amen. A-M-A-N. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly, but Amen. So Amen, the root of this word, Amen means to build up, to support, to foster as a parent nursing. Isn't that amazing? Um, steady and fidelity. So those are all the words of Amen there. So um, another word, this is, and what's important about that is this is talking about God. This is talking about Yahweh and his covenant that he keeps, that he is faithful to keep that to a thousand generations 
of those who love him. And y'all, by the way, God's not up there counting, okay, a thousand generations. That The word thousand there is an idiom that means on and on and on and on. A, a thousand on and on and on generations. That, that the Lord Yahweh is faithful to those who love him. Now remember, we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, right, is God. And so Holy Spirit fruit in us is everything God is. It's all of His good characteristics. It's all of that He gives to us from the fruit of His Spirit that comes through us, right? Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faith or faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. So this fruit is so important that it goes all the way back to Genesis 15, 6 with Abram, before he was even Abraham. And it says that he believed, he believed in God, he had faith in God, he trusted God, and that, because of that, he was considered righteous. Yes, so it's that same word, Aman. He had this trust in him, this faith in him, and it can, because of that, he was considered righteous with God. So how important is the fruit of the spirit of pistis? Whether we, whether we um, translate it as the, the spirit of faith or we translate it as the fruit of the spirit of faithfulness, we can see how important it is. For one thing, it's how we, it's how we stand righteous with God, is our trust in Him and our fidelity, right, to Him. But I don't want to get ahead. I'm, I'm going to bring us back to that point in a minute. So what His Spirit does in us, this is the fruit. This is important because... It has to do with trusting God and being true to God. Isn't that cool that God gives us even more trust, even more faith as we trust Him? I think about the father who had prayed for Jesus to heal his son. He was asking Jesus to heal him. And Jesus said, I can. Do you believe in it? He said, yes, I do believe, but, but help me have more. Help me have greater faith. Did you know he does that? What a faithful God that he will give us even more as we ask. This affects, my friends, this affects how we treat other people. I really believe um, until we trust God, it's really hard to trust other people. And maybe it goes both ways. You know, if you have a hard time trusting other people, you might have a hard time trusting God. So so just go, go to the Lord and say, Lord, help me trust you more. Help me trust you. Um, Lord, please grow my the pistis in me, the faith in me, the trust in me. I even I love using those ancient words in prayer. Um, Lord, and if you want to use Hebrew, Amen. Help me have this greater Amen and trust for you, Lord. So cool. So this, he helps strengthen our reliance and our trust in him through this fruit of the Spirit of faithfulness. It helps us be more like him, being unaffected by the word and world, the world being unaffected by the world. And this brings me to 2 Timothy 2, 11 through 13. This was one of our um, scriptures in our 31-day reading plan on the faithfulness of God. Here's this trustworthy saying. And I tried to look up this saying, and I don't know if this is something Paul wrote to be a saying that they would use, or if this is something that was already already um, said and if you know the answer to that please leave me a comment below um, so I too can learn about that but 2 Timothy 2 11 here's a trustworthy saying if we died with him 
we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, which is um, distressed and not believe, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Love that scripture, and the reason why I love that scripture so much, besides the fact just the huge promise of his faithfulness, is Jesus' faithfulness does not depend on mine. Right? Amen? It's not going to change the way he is, who he is, his faithfulness, and his covenant, even if I lose my trust in him. Now, it does say if we disown him, he's going to disown us. And I will just tell you, I have experienced that. I have experienced that right after college. I had a crisis of faith. I doubted my faith because I was not helping other people come to faith. And so I decided maybe I was wrong and they were right. And I just tried to believe that all religions were the same. And when I did that, the minute I said, maybe I'm wrong and they're right, and I'm just going to try to believe this way, that night I felt an emptiness inside me. Y'all, I had been a believer for years. No, I was in college. I had loved the Lord all through, all through my growing up years in high school. I was a crazy Bible thumping believer, carrying my Bible to school. I, in college, I felt called into ministry, but then I had this crisis of faith. And that year was such an empty year. I mean, I tried to go to church, and the pews were oh, they were they were just hard as a rock. And that church was empty to me because I didn't realize it. But I had denied, I had disowned Jesus. A year later, a, a friend who loved me just adopted me and fed me and fed me the word, fed me food and fed me the word and brought me into her family. And she said, Andy, you got to believe all of this or none of it. I said, I want to believe it all. I'm tired of feeling this way. And when I came back to faith in the word, I came back to faith as Jesus, as God's son who died for me and rose for me. I was filled again with his spirit. So I know now, God didn't leave me. God was orchestrating things. He put me right next door to teaching next door to another teacher who was my mentor teacher who loved Jesus. God was was helping me. He, he hadn't left me. But the Spirit of Jesus had, and I realized years later, it was because I had denied who he was, that he was, even though I didn't realize that's what I had done. When I was trying to make religions all the same, going toward the same thing, I had denied the purpose and the truth and the power of Jesus and that he was God's son and that he had died for me. So it's so important, but let me go back to that he is faithful. He can't deny himself. Jesus left me for a minute because I left him. But God, God was still there. And he was still wooing me. He was giving me time to figure it out. And y'all, I came back to stronger faith, right? I came back to being on fire. I came back to saying, I'm never going to do that again because I know what it's like. He used it for good, and now I'm a crazy woman who you can't get to shut up about Jesus because I know He's real. I know He's my Savior. I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. So, just to close up today, how do we get, how do we get this fruit of the Spirit, y'all? You know, first of all, is believing in Jesus, that He is the Savior of the world. That's the first step, 
is trusting in that, trusting in his word and trusting that it's true. And then study, 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 study. Reading is really good, but studying it, oh, it's even better because then it gets inside of us. So study. If you don't know where to begin to study, I do give a reading plan with prompts every month, but also I've got some studies, um, one on Ruth, one on Esther, but there are so many good studies out there um, that I want to encourage you to get into the Word. Spend time digging deep into Bible study. Um, so studying it, studying it, believing in Jesus, studying and then practice his presence. What does that mean? How do we practice the presence of Jesus, the practice of the Holy Spirit? It is as simple as saying, Lord, I need help today finding so-and-so. Trusting him with the smallest of things to the biggest of things. And I have an example to give you. My husband thought I was totally crazy because the other day I said, Mike, the Holy Spirit showed me how to use our soap dispenser. <laughs> so I had bought this a really, really cute, isn't it cute? A little soap dispenser at, um, in Walmart. And I guess that was just driving me crazy how all of my stuff was by the sink, but not, you know, in order or anything. So I bought this and I was so proud of myself. And then I got it home. And I put the dishwashing soap in it and nothing would come out of it. And I thought it was broken. And I was mad at myself. I was like, God, I just spent $12 for nothing. And so it sat like that for a few weeks on our, um, on our <laughs> next door sink. And then one day, God said, Andy, you need to take out some of that thick dishwashing soap and put some water in it to make it thin and then it will come out because it's one of those those foamy things which I didn't really know. Oh, oh, okay, my hand's back. <laughs> it works. It'll come out, see it come out. Anyway, Holy Spirit showed me how to do that. So practicing the presence of the Holy Spirit, there's a great little book about practicing the presence of God. It's about this thick and, and it's about this monk and how you learn how to practice the presence of God, washing dishes and doing everything, worshiping Him and everything He did from the most mundane to the serious stuff. Practice His presence. He's talk to Him. Just talk to Him. Worship Him. Recognize He's there. Ask Him for help in the smallest things as well as the biggest and I'm telling you, this, doing it, keeping a journal really helps me to practicing his presence. It just helps me to write it down and know he's there. Pray, just pray, Lord, more and more, I want more of you and less of me. Kind of like I had to throw, pour out, and didn't throw it away, but pour out some of that thick dishwashing soap because there was too much of it. And then I had to put some water in. Y'all, we need some of that Holy Spirit water in us, right? So that we can bubble out. We can bubble out the Holy Spirit's fruit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. So more of you, Lord, and less of me. I hope that encourages you about the fruit of the Spirit of faith. Or the fruit of the Spirit of faithfulness. They are both vital to our relationship with Jesus and they affect our relationship with others. Pray with me. Lord, I just praise you and love you. I pray that this was a blessing to someone. I pray that this encourages them to get into the Word. I pray that it encourages them to start digging down deep into the ancient language. There's so many great resources. Lord, help us. Help us have greater faith, greater faithfulness. Help us less of us and have more of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said amen. Thank you for joining. I'm going to put some links 
on the bottom here two different resources that I think are great um, helps to help you dig into the ancient word. Some of the resources I use, some online, um, some that you can buy. But also, I'm going to put down some links of some of my favorite Bible studies because studying the Word really, really changes you like nothing else. So that fruit of the Spirit can really start working and bubbling out in you. Thanks for joining me today. Next week, well, we'll see about next week, but the next video should be on the next fruit of the Spirit, which is gentleness. I'll see you soon. Thank you for joining. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Go to wordsbyindylay.com for more um, articles and reading plans. Bye.